You know, even with the current advancements in smartphone technology and all the great processors and displays that we get, there are still a ton of things that annoy us about smartphones. So I'm Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now, and these are the top five things that still annoy us about smartphones even in 2013. Number five is really a lot of basics. You would think that smartphones are supposed to be smarter than feature phones, but I could give you a ton of feature phones that have better call quality than most smartphones. And that's actually one of the worst realities today, the fact that we actually have to review phones and tell you which ones have better call quality than the others because there is a huge, dramatic difference between one phone and the other. Aside from that, we still have basics that people have not been able to fix, like speakerphone quality, which is such an irony given the fact that a lot of smartphones are much bigger than feature phones and again we have feature phones that have better speakerphone quality and that has a lot to do with the fact that we are still using mono speakers on smartphones which are supposed to be a lot better. Number four is image quality on most smartphones. It is still hit or miss and probably one of the biggest ironies is that I still have photographs taken with a 1.2 megapixel camera of a Motorola V635 almost half a decade ago that are much better than a lot of the photographs that I can take with the current Moto X. And that's really one of the things that we don't understand. Why is it that there is such an involvement of camera technology and we have smartphones like the iPhone which really do a good job, but then again we have other OEMs that still haven't even figured it out. And probably one of the biggest ironies there is Sony, which is the company that's in charge of the imaging processors of most smartphones, and their camera technology is really not the best. Number three has to do with software and mainly with stability and also software updates. You'd think that by now with all the enhancements in Project Butter and all the new enhancements in KitKat, you'd think that all smartphones would perform great, but no. Sadly, this is one of the things that we still have to review. We have to tell you just how good software is on a specific smartphone because there are some companies that get it right and some companies that just don't get it right at all. We have performance issues. We have issues where we think that so much processing power would be great great, but no, some smartphones don't perform as well as they should, even with all the horsepower that they have. And then we have software updates, which you would assume should be solved by now with all the Nexus programs and all the enhancements we have, even in Windows Phone, and no. Sadly, there's only one OEM that's figured it out, and that's Apple, and even then, iOS 7 sucks. Number two is all day battery life. Just think about this analogy. What's the point of you buying a sports car if you won't be able to actually use it the way you should? And that's the same case with smartphones. We've got great app stores on almost every platform. We've got great games, great movie selections. We've got great music quality now, but we have smartphones that don't have great battery life for me to actually be able to enjoy all this content. And that really makes having this great multimedia machine pointless. If I'm not gonna be able to play the game that I want for more than an hour or watch the movie that I want for more than a couple of hours, then it really becomes pointless for me to be able to have YouTube on my phone if I also have to be taking care of the battery to be able to actually get phone calls because I also use my phone for that. Or for messaging as well. We wish that smartphones and OEMs would figure this out. We really don't understand what the problem is. They're working on more processors. They're working on more displays. They're working on bigger phones, but they're not working on battery life and we really don't understand why. And the top number one reason why we're annoyed by smartphones in 2013 is really compromise. It's the fact that there is no such thing as the perfect smartphone. If you want to buy the gorgeous HTC One, you're going to have to put up with the terrible camera that it has. Or probably get that gorgeous Galaxy S4 and then hate the hyperglaze coating in the plastic and touch was as well. You can get great battery life on the Galaxy Note 3, but you're not going to like a phone that big. Or you can get the gorgeous iPhone 5S and pretty much hate the fact that it's got iOS 7. There is really no perfect phone and you have to put up with a lot of things lately like the great camera technology on the Lumia 1020 but it's got this huge hump and it's also got the problem that a lot of people don't really like Windows phones so again it's that compromise it's the fact that there is no perfect thing out there but that leads me to the question of the day what annoys you the most of your current smartphone? What would you wish that your phone did better? In my particular case, honestly, there are still a lot of things, but mainly it has to do with battery life. But leave us a comment down below. What are your current annoyances? That's it for today's top five. Thank you very much for watching. You can follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next top five.